Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of How Did This Get Booked? I, of course, am your host, Jake Manning, and I am a professional wrestler, a veteran of professional wrestling, that is. I've held just about every job in professional wrestling except selling popcorn. And I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Zane Riley. Zane, how are we doing today? I'm great, Jake. Or as John Zandig would say, I'm fucking great, Jake. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, Zane, you're sporting a, a gallon of uh, some sort of substance. Looks a little bit like pee. I, I'm guessing it's green tea? It was... No, it's pee. It's, it's pee. pee. Okay. It's pee. Yeah. It's pee. That's, what, that's what this podcast sterile. is. Sterile. And... This, that's what this podcast has driven you to, is, is, is drinking your own pee? And trying to be sterile. I know, I do know you're a big fan of Kesha, so I, I can understand if that's the direction you're going. I had a lot of Kesha moments today. It's real weird that you mentioned that. <laughs> nice head by the way. Thank you. Um, as always, we're joined by a non-wrestling fan, but we're joined actually by a non-wrestling fan and a wrestling fan. Um, we'll start uh, with John G. Hartness, who is a writer, editor, and podcaster. Now, John, you are a professional wrestling fan. I am. I'm a professional wrestling fan and a fan of this podcast, too. Yes. So the only way you would let me be on the cast is if I found somebody who I could sucker <laughs> into watching this show with us and who isn't a wrestling fan. And the best thing is when she walked up to me today, she looks at me, shook her head and says, the things I do for my friends. <laughs> so now I understand what you talk about when you're on the cast and you talk about the friends that you lose. <laughs> By having them guest on the show and making them watch well, these wrestling cards. Well, speaking of the person who will never talk to any of us <laughs> in this room again, our non-wrestling fan is Gail Z. Martin, an author. And uh, Gail, uh, thank you so much for traveling down this very bumpy road that we're about ready to go down today. Um, how long have you known John? And, and uh, basically, when did... How long has the friendship run? It's now. <laughs> what what it's have been, we ruined? It's, today? it's been several years. I, I think I think we can make this work. You okay. know, uh, I, I I think I think it'll it'll survive here. But uh, yeah, okay, that was special. What I watched, <laughs> uh, real special. We'll get to that. I, I write epic fantasy, so I'm no stranger to violence in my books. People get. You know, heads cut off, guts spill out, all kinds of stuff. So just like a CZW. We yeah, could have only man. been so lucky in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Better sword wounds, dude. Better sword wounds. Yeah, but less creative use of props. And the word fuck. Yeah, this is true. No, no, I use that. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that was the thing when when, when we when I discussed with John. I'm sure John's like, oh well, maybe we'll get like a really bad WrestleMania or a WCW show. Yeah. Did you have any anticipation that I was going to drop this gem on you? No. And your friend? <laughs> you know, I've listened to a lot of the shows that you've recorded, and I was like, okay, well maybe we'll get one of those crappy Russo late WCW podcast or maybe we'll get <laughs> something with like aging Greg the Hammer Valentine in a fairgrounds and yep, you're welcome yeah <laughs> I was not prepared for this not even yourself who is a big fan of you know independent wrestling you actually said that you already have the high spots wrestling network, I do so. I have the network subscription so I had it. heard of CZW Back when this was recorded, I was the target audience. I watched ECW when it was on syndication. And yeah, I wasn't ready for this. <laughs> well, well, let's know we can blow your socks off. Now, Gail, <laughs> what is your exposure to professional wrestling before this whole experience happened to you? I watched some WWF back when I was about 10 on the, uh, you know, on a bad cable channel. So about 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> a little longer ago than that. But, uh, you know, I was expecting uh, spandex. And uh, no, nope. wasn't any spandex. <laughs> Blue jeans. <laughs> leather pants, I think. <laughs> leather pants. They, yeah, they, there was leather. I mean... Damn, Dean Ambrose trying to wrestle in le in blue jeans is bad enough, but I'm like leather pants outside. outside. It looks like it's hot. It's extremely hot because it was in June, which we'll get right. Let's jump right into the show right we're now. Here, let's get to the part <laughs> where right. I give the particulars about the show. The show that we are discussing, we've been tiptoeing around the issue, is Combat Zone Wrestling. Uh, it, the show took place on June 25th in the year 2000 in Sewell, New Jersey. Uh, there was roughly about 
200-ish people there, I'm guessing. And the name of the show is very special because it's the first time that the name of the show has actually answered the question to the podcast, (laughs) which is how did this get booked? And the name of the show is They Said It Couldn't Be Done. Should have been called They Said It Shouldn't Be Done. (laughs) Sometimes there's a really good reason people say things can't be done Mm -hmm. because you shouldn't try. Well, uh, part of the reason why it was named the way it is, and I got a little bit of of back info before we get to the, the point to kind of explain. This was actually supposed to be on pay-per-view. This show, <laughs> in particular. With the same camera quality, I hope. Uh, we, we can only hope. We can only hope. Dude, pay-per-view doesn't pay you to watch yeah. it. <laughs> so I get paid for this episode, right? Because no, I watched it. it. Double what you got paid for the last episode, pal. I know we're in the world of the WWE Network and the idea of pay-per-view seems so alien to you now, Zane. But no, that's not what pay-per-view okay. is for. Okay, sorry, sorry. Because uh, originally this was supposed to be a joint project with uh, Big Japan Pro Wrestling because that's who CZW was working with at the time and they were going to have a whole pay-per-view show and it's supposed to be at the at the ECW arena and they were going to do that but because of CZW's brand of violence they were you know kicked out of the building and also too Big Japan pulled out wait 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 they were thrown out of the ECW arena well they were full excuse me when I say out of the arena they were thrown out of Pennsylvania pardon me (laughs) (laughs) I I misspoke building Uh, state who could uh, not uh, mix those up uh, yes the the, same size the the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission came down on them and said that they couldn't do what they were doing that's why this shows in New Jersey Um, also to New Jersey don't give a fuck exactly because that place is a piece of shit exactly and and Big Japan pulled out and and to let you know what they were going to do and put on pay-per-view, they were going to have uh, Onita, who's a legendary star in Japan, um, with another man's uh, a Japanese wrestler who I can't pronounce, and uh, Ichiharo uh, Yabaguchi, I believe that's how you say it, versus Terry Funk <laughs> and John Zandig and a mystery partner of Terry Funk's choosing. That was going to be the... Terry Ooh. Funk was going to be on this show. Do we know who that mystery partner was going to be? Not in my research. No. Ah. And then Lobo was going to wrestle a wrestler of versus a wrestler of Onita's cho- choosing. So, yeah, pay per view was canceled, and basically th- this was a big middle finger to Pennsylvania, big Japan wrestling. Hence, why the first words out of Zandig's mouth was "fuck Onita, fuck Onita." Fuck on you. Uh, that's all that he was saying. That's that's yeah. that's what he was. Yeah, I don't know if you can understand anything on this thing. The 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 quality of the of the feed that is uh, on the High Spots Network is not that great because it's taken from a VHS tape. Shocker. Yeah. Um, yeah. But there, from for anybody who's interested in watching the show in a very condensed version and higher quality, there's actually a highlight reel of this show, hmm. and I watch it. It's only like ten minutes long. Wait, what? What? I feel like we could have done this. What's the other nine minutes and 45 seconds? (laughs) Actually, the show is much more entertaining when you put it on fast forward. I mean, that's how I watched probably three quarters of it because it was too damn slow. (laughs) Yeah, pacing was not their strong point. Yeah, so fast forwarding just, you know, and, and... well, you really? couldn't understand what no. any of the guys in the ring were saying anyway. So. Yeah, but, but you, I feel like you could watch this this 10-minute highlight reel, and then you could basically understand everything we're probably going to talk about in this episode fairly easily. Um, all the high points and the low lights are in there for sure. And have less reason to bleach your eyeballs when you're done. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But, you know, we, we got, we've got a lot to talk about. We'll jump kind of right in in chronological order and feel free to jump in, throw stuff in. We can we can move forward, we can rewind or go back and forth. But I, I think we... I don't want to go back any more than we have. <laughs> well, yeah. well, let, me, let me tell you what my initial impression was here because I was truly expecting cheesier than usual spandex cheesy wrestling i mean i was expecting low budget cheesy spandy well, we wrestling that. but notice i i thought people would like have clothes on and be in a building and not have barbed wire <laughs> for a fence so this this um i put the disc in and i sit down and it comes up as this grainy black and white and my thought was Holy shit, this is either a dogfight or a snuff film. Totally a snuff film. I mean, it feels dirty. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, you're right in all those. And I went back and pulled it out and looked at the, just in case you'd given me the wrong disc, (laughs) giving me the benefit of the doubt. 
And then it was, crap, this really is what I'm supposed to watch. Okay, we're here. Uh, best prank I've ever pulled, I guess. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> you guys thought you were watching wrestling. Here's I, snuff. I like how all of your... That was close. I like how all of your expectations for, for professional wrestling were not met, especially the part about... It's taking place in a building. I'm glad I could yeah. produce that for you. I mean, that, that furthered the dog fight impression. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a new one on me. I'm like, I'm used to maybe one match being out in a street fight or in a river in the old hardcore title days, but the whole card? Wow. Well, I mean, I guess you save on lighting rental that way. Well, who's going to put that kind of shit in a building? You got to clean that up and pay for that. Yeah, but see, we would miss out on the sweet intro by Pastor Jim hmm. rolling in on, I believe, a Volkswagen or a Saab. Like, yeah, right. yeah. whatever the hell just, was he doing? Just coming in off the field. A, a modern, yeah. a, a, an old timey Alberto Del Rio entrance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe ahead of his time, you know? Mm. Like, just, just comes in and. Song. Trailblazer, they would call him. Yes. It's, no. it's, it's, Which would have been ironic if he indeed pulled up in, in a, a Trailblazer. trailblazer. Ah. Yeah, I knew it was bad, but the cameraman this. was wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I had that note, too. I'm like, the cameraman's wearing a mask. Is he embarrassed? Because oh, I'm a little be, embarrassed I'm for him. Real, yeah. real. And there was another dude running around in a mask. And then they started talk, talking like those guys had names. They were, uh, I think their names were Z-Bar, and I, I think Z-Bar was a wrestler. And like, There was a big storyline with that, and I can't remember it. I can't remember the particulars of it all paying off. I'm sure there's some CZW fans that know exactly how could you not don't know about the bar, you know. <laughs> so, but I remember the whole payoff of that. And not have right ever now. been in. Jersey. Didn't get payoff in this show, so it didn't jog my memory. Well, there so. was a guy who went into the ring up front. And he was yelling, and he was obviously trying to get the crowd worked up. And I thought, shit, this is like a tent revival with real blood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But my first thought when I saw the whole intro and well, my first res my first note was, oh god. <laughs> And then it was, don't you need ropes for Battle Royal? Because we got started and they only had ropes on two sides. No, uh, They're that, like this whole... I thought that was barbed wire. I didn't think those yeah, were ropes. But, but that was a barbed wire match. That was what I was confused about. I'm like, okay, Hence so we're starting wire. with this promo. Start the show hot. With yeah. a barbed wire match. But there's still only barbed wire on two sides. And they talk for a long time. And then mm -hmm. they come back and there's barbed wire everywhere. Like, did they have to start There's before they finished? There's barbed wire with rigged powder charges, so that when you Landmine. throw somebody against mm. the barbed wire, you get a nice explosion. You know, that whole first part was just like this really slow, violent strip tease, and it was Except sick without as fuck. anyone you'd want to see naked. I was about to say, yeah. so you got titillated yeah. by the... Yeah. No, Cause, cause not in the slightest. Mm -hmm. the, and he had let's to just it. get that on the record. And, 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 not. No, and not. let's be clear why the strip tease happened, because like Pastor Jim's pants were lit on fire. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit, they set that guy on fire. <laughs> and then I was Guess like... Guess they're hot, brother. Guess they're hot. <laughs> and I couldn't... Because, we, because the sound was so bad, at one point I said, did he say there's a pig? Are they going to like hit someone with a pig? Because hey, it was fans bring it was fans bring the weapons. Yes. So I wasn't sure. I never saw a pig. I think I would have been more entertained if they had beaten someone with like Porky, a hardcore pig, or a, a taxidermied pig or something, so that no, that, no. Nah, this was nah. Susie big old ham bone, you yeah, know, like a wrapped in barbed wire. Yeah. It, it just occurred Hot to leg. me how slim your job choices have to be to make this look like a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's assuming that any of these guys have jobs outside of this. Yeah, like, oh, I'm pretty... Well, I mean, there's always Mom's couch, so yeah. they gotta live or somewhere. Or basement. Yeah. yeah. But wow. Yeah. I never knew violence could be this boring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I'm gonna put that in the notes of the show. <laughs> I didn't know violence could be so boring. That's good. Well, that's... Or recreate a box for this and then just put that as one of the, the taglines for the... Yeah. The DVD. Yeah, that, 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 that could be just right go there. on the back of the T-shirt. Have your violence. How so does get books on the front right. and on the back? I didn't know violence could be this boring. Right. Mm. Well, <laughs> don't worry. T-shirt that is. After we send a, a, a pastor on fire, business picks up when John Zandek comes to the ring with pyrotechnics in the middle of the day. You mean John fucking Zandek? Yes, I mean John Zandek. Yes, the John Zandek. Yeah, that one. Um, pyro in the middle of the day in the middle of the summer in a field. No way that's safe. Like, they're going to set shit on fire. And nobody's going to see it. That's the bigger thing. <laughs> yeah. like, Except for the that fire That was department. probably the safest part of the entire match, was getting set on fire. Definitely yeah. the most entertaining. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's the thing. But, like, uh, Gail, what are your thoughts on John Zandig? Because John was the guy. He was the, in the yellow with the suitcase. Uh, he was the guy with the, the blazer with the cut-off sleeves. He was the guy that got on the microphone and screamed, fuck Onita, fuck Onita. Oh, I, I, you know, the audio was so bad, I just fast-forwarded until they started hitting each other. Okay. <laughs> um, because call, it was boring. Call, yeah. Yeah, there was one dude that really seemed to have a problem with Dennis Corluzzo. Yeah, yeah, that, that'd be that'd be uh, Zandig. And okay. Dennis Corluzzo was was he was implying was the guy that got him kicked out of Pennsylvania. Okay, who was Dennis Corluzzo running? He was he was the NWA guy. Who, okay, who Shane Douglas threw the the belt down. Okay, uh, yeah, because he was running NWA at the time. He was running NWA shows in that area. He threw the belt down, and okay. Dennis Corluzzo was the one. Yeah, I kind of remember team. everybody thinking he yes. was a putz back in this time. So yeah. I mean, he was, he was he was good to people, but typical Northeast wrestling promoter, you know, you know, maybe not somebody you'd like to hang out with for more than five hours, you know, maybe or even five the, minutes till the check. Or yeah, exactly, exactly. You, well, you, you, definitely, <laughs> let's not go out. And eat, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. Are you trying to tell me you think people like this have banks and checking accounts? Yeah, no. I, was, I thought I, that that word came out of my mouth, and I was like, Nah, I ain't taking a check from this. These guys can't take checks. Nah. But uh, and then I had a note that says, I don't think "Youth Gone Wild" is the right entrance music for this whole thing. <laughs> 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 well, he's trying to really. You know, Zandig was truly trying to hit hit the young audience. You know, mm-hmm. he's yeah. trying to get that rebellious audience. And I'm just he's saying, like, so much. still not a new song in 2000. I know, still I, old. Because that shit was all was all going when I was in high school. Well, he wasn't a wrestler when that that song came <laughs> out, and he always wanted to be his entrance <laughs> song. So, like, this is just him making up for old times. And gotta say, short dresser. And you know what? You know, when I when I look at John Zandig, he makes me think. Of like President Camacho from Idiocracy, <laughs> like if we were ever gonna elect a professional wrestler, this is the guy. You this want. is the guy because think about it. He hates overregulation. Mm-hmm. You okay. know, he he definitely wants to give people what they want. Yeah, you okay. know, and then also too very sharp dresser. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe Sleeveless Z- Duster is the way to go. May- maybe Zandig 2020. I don't know. Nah, dude. The Rock's running in 2020, and then we're good. <laughs> you would be vice president. So yeah. I guess something happens. Maybe yeah. cabinet position. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. So is he still working? Is he still wrestling today? Yes. He just had a match with Joey Janela uh, a couple months ago. Zandig, yeah. He, he was gone for a very, very long time. He, pop- like, he kind of popped up again. He's like Beetlejuice. Yeah. You say okay. his name a couple of times. Yeah. So pop- I had a friend in college like that. Yeah. It got to the point where whenever he would walk up, he'd say, okay, who said it? Yeah. And he, that was the deal. Yeah. Well, you know, I got that the, the fans brought the weapons, but then when the fans <laughs> became the weapons and got <laughs> in the ring, you know, it, it was like, okay, this is different. And was that the ECW Arena Hawaiian shirt guy? Yes. Yes. Okay. That's the point. He's a very big supporter of all independent wrestling. Well, because then they talk about it later on in commentary, which halfway through, I... I didn't realize there was commentary until halfway through. I just thought it was like more fans being loud behind the camera. I'm not 100% sure there was until halfway through. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you, you didn't appreciate the comedic the comedic stylings of Eric Gorgiulo and John House? It was hard That's to exactly tell which I mean. ones were supposed to be the comedic stylings. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure whether it was the comedic stylings, the fat shirtless guy in like high school coach shorts running around with a security lanyard the bald guy running around in the crowd all through the card because i was like i think that guy's security but he's running around in his underwear the guy with the briefcase who looked like an extra from a tex avery cartoon no, you know, I missed that no, guy. I, yeah, the... Well, you're thinking of Dewey Donovan. Who yeah. Comes oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Dew. This, and, 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 <laughs> and, and, this is the Dew. Yeah. And, and, and this was his debut show of the of the Dew, you know? It's like, so. what, your insurance salesman showed up in the middle of it? He came out. He, you know, he was... He had, he had he's, something going on. Yeah. He was, he, he was around CCW for a very long time. He, he was around longer than probably just about anybody on this show. I, I will say that I did, after watching this train wreck, I did go and look at a recent CZW show just to mm-hmm. see that <laughs> it's the changed a bit. The evolution, and they do have equipment now, and they're allowed <laughs> to play indoors. Other than barbed wire. Yes. No, yeah. that's still there. Yeah. They saw that. Yeah, yeah. I, I watched that first match, and I, I thought, you know, I wrote down, such a tangled mess of sublimated sex and aggression, I don't even know where to start. 
Wow. And I'm sticking to that. Sounds, wow. like, sounds like you started and finished with that quote. Like, I think yeah, that, you should yeah. just seen the look on Zane's face. That was deep. When you hit, when you hit the word sublimated. sublimated yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> None of these guys know what that word means. <laughs> I don't know what that word that means. Shit. I'm a fucking professional writer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Now, I was not okay with the girl that got clobbered. That was not cool. Uh, yeah, like that. You're talking. Well, you know this shit's fake, right? Now hmm. the clobbering didn't look fake. Now, now, obviously, are we talking about match two or later, later on. on? That was, I think, match two. That was still pretty early on, right after the, the they brought out Royal. the real ropes. Yeah, the oh, when they finally yeah. got the real ropes, and the, and the fans bring the weapons for battle royal, which. The people that came into the ring weren't using the weapons that the fan brought, and that's why the fan started throwing them into the yes. ring at the time. So. That was bizarre. Yeah. No one was Especially using, the no one using goddamn weapons. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it just looked a lot. It looked like an old Royal Rumble match mm-hmm. where it was like, oh, I'm supposed to fall out now. Boop. And he just jumped <laughs> All right, what's my time? Actually, my note was I've seen better hockey fights. <laughs> no hockey. <laughs> But yeah, like, uh, to finish up, anything else we have to say about the first match, the explosion barbed wire match, other than it happened? Yeah. And it's, there were well, kind of explosions. And they, they sort of tried to build up ECW fans with the big choke slam at the end. Yeah. But there was never, there wasn't that much of a payoff to that. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know if anything happened after the fight. No, I don't think it did. I guess my big, my big thing was... They kept talking about how this was just like Terry Funk in Japan. I don't think this was just like no. Terry Funk in Japan. I mean, there may have been barbed wire in both, but... Shit exploded. But he, like, exploded he was but... wrestling at Kawasaki Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Front there was of, a roof. They, well, no, there wasn't a roof, but, but there, there were... were 40,000 people. Yeah, there was something there. very large, yes. <laughs> and, and he was Terry Funk. So, I mean, even at 70, he's better than most of the guys that we're looking at. Today. Including Lobo and oh. John Sandick. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, a uh, lot of unprotected. This, it took me back. This was the era of unprotected chair shots. Yeah. yeah see, that's that's something I, yeah, I, I love talking about because I grew up in the... <clears throat> that came up in the tail end of that era of you better not put your hands up to protect yourself from a steel chair. Now few years like in kind of in this era i think we're kind of in a mix now but there was a time not too long ago that i remember it was like kevin steen and steve carino people were mad because they didn't put their hands up like fans yeah that, that's the weirdest thing that fans were mad that you did and then all of a sudden it switched to that they mad that you did it yeah, so I, so it's just very weird now that it's mm. just this complete flip yeah i remember watching some stuff recently on youtube where some they weren't putting their hands up, and I'm like, wait a minute, nah, we we moved past this, guys. We're we're not trying to like make people forget their names at forty anymore. <laughs> we got we, we we got our cautionary tales yeah. already, and and it it doesn't serve any other purpose than just gratuitous. Yeah, you you can, you can convey that like, hey, I hit him with a chair. We all understand. This is was big and impactful. We get the point. This is bigger than most. Yeah, you're pointing out a nuance here between gratuitous and what? <laughs> well, the, the, the fine <laughs> art, the fine, the line. fine art of hitting someone with a chair, yes. and not being utterly gratuitous. Yes, absolutely. Ah, there is a okay. fine line. Yeah, hitting someone on the forearm or hands with a chair. Yeah, or just you know, just slowing it down a little bit is the idea of you know you can hit it like okay, this is obviously the impactful things that we could potentially lose. It, it's, it's like hitting a move, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to drop you on your head to convey the point that this was far more impactful than a hip toss. I yeah. was just wondering who their table wholesaler was because that person was obviously making bank. I more want to know about the barbed wire wholesaler because there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of that in this show. I should have started counting them. the tables they busted, you know, from the beginning because that just got funny. Which yeah. is good for them because nowadays it's almost impossible to find a wooden table. Yes. Now weird. we yeah. know why. Yeah, these guys have just <laughs> depleted the source. Which should but, actually just be an analogy for the future. Yeah, the, we're losing the rain forces and wooden tables. To bring God it. damn it, Devon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, was kind of like a regularly Trump. scheduled bar brawl. Yes. But uh, <laughs> speaking of, uh, like, uh, all right, let's get to match number two. The fans bring the weapons. Battle Royal. Uh, Crazy chick screaming in the background. Like, yeah. what was with that? I have no idea. 
uh, the guy, uh, Jesse Drive, who brought his whole family there. Okay. That's, he, he, his, uh, ticket I mean, seller. Ticket seller. He's in the battle row for sure. Yeah. Fans get mad, so they start throwing like weapons in. Mm-hmm. I, this was such a mess, and this was obviously a lot of ticket oh, sellers. Oh, yeah. A lot of all, trainees. This yeah, this is very Seven or eight much. people in the ring at one point. And, well, that's, and none that's of them supposed to happen. Yeah. No, okay. None of them say the safest person in that ring is Rock and Rebel. And I don't know if I want to live in a universe where that is the case. <laughs> was he a rebel just because he had a mullet? Because he, in fact, rocked. Yes. Oh, okay. rock and Trained by Ricky and uh, Ricky and Robert, uh, Rock and Roll Express. Oh, well, that's So I got to lose to him in two minutes, too? Huh? They got to lose to him in two minutes also? I mean, he's, listen, he's done his share of two-minute jobs <laughs> in the Rock and Roll Express over the years. That was part of his training, I'm sure. Good for him. Yeah, my comment was the big guy in the black T-shirt just looks old. Uh, that's Which pretty is... good for most of the card. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um I was like, okay, so dude number one was Fat Matt Hardy. And then Calm Farty. They named they had named like two dudes in the beginning and I kinda understood what they were saying. Uh-huh. So of course the guy that they mentioned who was feuding with this Gabriel Knight guy, of course that's the guy who randomly gets drawn the yeah. second mm-hmm. entrant. I was like, Oh, is that Steve Lombardi? <laughs> <laughs> You know, what I loved was all of the um, righteous outrage from the two guys who were the commentators. And I thought, you know, this is what you watch when you want your sports as fake as your news. <laughs> <laughs> so all we're missing is like a ticker on the bottom mm-hmm. is basically is all we're missing with, with, with uh, Twitter handles. Yeah, and instead much. of a fact check at the end of the card, we have a unprotected hair, headshot, unprotected chair shot and a table broken counter. Yeah. Oh, and let's not even discuss, you know, blood exposure here by the end of the match. Yeah. That was totally well, freaking me out. Back in the day, I think I thought the gimmick was that you had to be bleeding to be eliminated. That used to be what the, one of the CZW standards oh, for wow. a, a rumble. Yeah, I think this was still over the top. Okay. This one was, but yes, there was there were, that was a you couldn't go over the top until you were. There was an IAA Mid South uh, battle roll. I know for sure that uh-huh. like the way you got eliminated is you you maybe blind. it was what it was. Yeah, there was definitely one of those uh, d- during that time. It, this is just a weird time. Like hardcore wrestling is like really coming at the forefront. I think the Briscoe brothers illuminated this point the best. Is that you know e- ECW is still going on at this time, mm-hmm. but they're doing a lot less of the violent stuff because they are on TNN at this moment in time. Mm-hmm. They're trying to get out to national audiences mm-hmm. uh, and get exposure on a more of a mainstream level. So, so, so one of the things of like New the Jack viol- has warrants out for him mm-hmm. in too many states, yeah, so, so he the, can't do that shit anymore. So like the super ultra violent stuff has been pushed aside, but there's still people that want to see that. So CZW was kind of picking up that part of professional wrestling, that little niche that had been left behind. And then once ECW closed down, there was this need for like some very good technical wrestling, which ECW produced a lot of at that time. So there was a situation that these that CZW was kind of doing both, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then Ring of Honor popped up. And then all of a sudden, CZW is trying to differ- differentiate, so they went more ultra-violent. Ring of Honor went more like, you know... Ultra technical. Uh, yeah, yeah, ultra, ultra technical. And the two split off in like this this thing where they just two worlds of that came from ECW it was under one house has now been like split like an atom. Yeah. Split I mean, one of my world. favorite matches of all time is an ECW match. It was the last Eddie and Dean yeah. match, Eddie's farewell match. The two out of three falls match when Eddie had been signed and it was his last match. Mm-hmm. It was. I mean, it's one of the best matches I've ever watched. Yeah, and I'm sure on that card, you had the, the <coughs> Rottens doing something oh, yeah. barbed wire related. Probably, yeah. So all that was underneath one roof, but now it, it split up over two promotions. And basically, CZW was picking up that, that charge of that. But when you do that, sometimes you don't get necessarily the best technical people or the best storytellers. Well, and at this time, the best technical people and best storytellers that were willing to do that work were signed somewhere else. Exactly. ECW that, that's another thing too. Around. In two thousand, like WCW is like signing whoever. Like they're signing people, and they're not even using him. Like Lady Poffo <laughs> has a contract with WCW, and they're not using him. So like, this is a time when everybody's getting contract, everybody's getting signed. There's three companies that have national television, um, and there's independent promotions everywhere. So this is 
a big deal. And there's plenty of Japanese promotions as well mm, that yeah. are bringing Americans over. And Americans that aren't even on television or have been on television at the time. Which, hence why Big Japan was working with CZW. But, um... But no, this this uh, battle royal spills off into match number three, which is Rock and Rebel versus Nick Burke, Softcore um, Nick Burke. Yes, Softcore Nick Burke. So, I I did love that. Yes, uh, there was say. a somersault off the ropes that was pretty cool. He could move. I thought that was that was, was a decent right. move. Um, I and mean, the backflip off the dumpster. <laughs> you know, even if everybody. That's a little bit later on. That's, that's a little the, later. Yeah, it's a little bit later on. This the, that's the next match, which we okay. Get to. This one was just kind of rolled right, and this is yeah. the one that had fighting in the chairs and the backdrops onto the chairs outside. Oh yeah, and then the very scary Death Valley driver. Ugh. Yeah. Through the table. This is like kind of the one I, last time you see tables for a bit. Yeah. So yeah, because I thought he might be dead. Yeah, which is was, a hot move. This whole show is just a bunch of Death Valley drivers. They did a yeah. lot of that. Lobo move. hit one, Zandig hit one, uh, and then like it was just a big ongoing. This is super kick of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Now, and I think I think I wrote down because it was like the first move, rest, real move or hold. I'd say I was like, wait, is he actually? Is that a dragon sleeper? <laughs> yeah. That's that's a move. Somebody was trying to put someone in a submission. Well, he was he was softcore. You know, right. He's not this hardcore guy. No. But, uh, but yeah, match was okay. Kind of yeah. spilled into it. He was but, kind of a low-rent Jeff Hardy. Yeah. But we'll get into now match number four where they did the dumpster dive. Yeah, what yeah. I love, you know, that was cool. Even if everybody he was going to fall on had to just sort of stand there and you could see them kind of a little <laughs> to the left, a yeah. little to the right. Okay, now he's going to fall on us. I mean, you know, not exactly completely natural. But, hey, give him credit. It was a dumpster. Well, that's what Chris Rock talks about in his stand-up. He's like, look, I'll get white people to stand there and catch a fool. <laughs> Black folk be like, nah, screw this. So part like the damn Red Sea and splat. Nah, y'all crackers, y'all stand there and let the jackass jump on you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the match match number four is between Trent Acid and Rick Blade, which, you know, at this time, you know, like they're they're the, <clears throat> the young guys mm-hmm. doing a bunch of spots, doing a bunch of flips, yeah. and just like for the time, it, this was this was very good. And Trent Acid's the future at this point. Like he's. This he's really this is right on his like like cusp of his rise right before he unfortunately died. Yeah, Ooh, like bummer. he he was like a, an indie darling, and, mm-hmm. and this is like the, the early days. Go. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is the early days of the, of the backseat boys, which you know at mm-hmm. one point in time were wrestling for about every major company in the world. Okay. Where they they did a couple uh, dark matches for WWE, WCW. Mm-hmm. I think they were even like Sunday Night Heat. Ooh, first the Dudley Boys on one episode. Like they were like a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, where, see I didn't know anything about any of the indie stuff that was going on when this was going yeah, on. Yeah. So because I was in college or no I wasn't. I was newly married so I was way too broke to go see wrestling. Yeah. But this those guys were good. I guess I did say I did write down. Do any of these people wear ring gear, ever? No. <laughs> you know you don't want to mess up your ring gear doing this crap, man. Well, hey, after the one great. guy dropped his pants, just be glad they have clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is an era where like the Hardy Boys are on TV and they're wrestling in like jeans. Cheetos. So like every indie yeah. guy kind of looks up to them in a sense. Like that's something that like the Hardy Boys will never get like major recognition <clears> for is how much of an influence. They had on independent yeah. wrestling at, 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 at this juncture. Kind of like nowadays, every in, every other indie match has to have an insiguri in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's certain things that everybody kind of goes to. Like like when AJ in like 06, everybody had like the little uh, no-sleeve hoodie. Yeah. Everybody had that as a ring jacket or a long one like Christopher Daniels. Mm. Um, or biker shorts like Samoa Joe, when that like influences how it trickles down, especially in the gear, mm-hmm. are still very prevalent and stuff like that. So still didn't still didn't wear it as good as Christopher Daniels, of course. Who, who wears anything as good as Christopher Daniels? Definitely, <laughs> de- definitely not a Fu Manchu. <laughs> <laughs> now we talked about the dumpster dive. Maybe I missed it, but they were supposed to have a dumpster match. Correct. That was talked about multiple yeah. times, but never occurred. It, it didn't happen. Mm-hmm. I kept, I did because they keep bringing up the dumpster. Oh, they're going to the dumpster later. We're going to see that dumpster brawl match or whatever, and it never occurs. I don't remember hearing that at all. Yeah, it, it is. It maybe was brought up multiple times. Maybe they were talking about it for another show. Or maybe they, well, this was a two day thing, right? It was no, a, I think this was because I or 
They had another show the next day, maybe. I don't yeah, know. that's what I thought. Maybe like I thought they mentioned it was like a like a more than one show, and like we just watched day one and day two is when they were gonna have the dumpster match. I thought maybe that. Oh. Maybe I, maybe I paid too much but attention to the wasn't commentary. Broadcast live anywhere was I mean, it? Seriously, they no. they had they could Thank stay God. put. They didn't have to like clear the hell out so the cops didn't catch them. This, they had permits. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing well, too. We don't know if they, we don't know if the, the, sh- the show. Well, yeah, it's New Jersey. New Jersey's a shit. Because I'm looking at this going, does the crowd sign a waiver to attend? Oh no, that's probably way too sensible. <laughs> but by the time all the people dove into the crowd, threw stuff into the crowd, that's smashed a shit that's written the on the crowd. back of the ticket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that nobody that, ever reads. Yeah. Okay. By entering this building, you yeah. agree not to Which see I believe, us if a hockey uh, gets you in the head or something. I believe, like, Tournament kind of, of Death, whatever what was it, Tournament of Death, it's outside in the, nowadays, in the the big field, is it yes. that one? I believe they have something posted, like, by entering, you wave all. Because there's just barbed wire Common glass sense. just going everywhere. Light still tubes. to this day, they still do that today. Yeah. Well, I assume that, like, the Gathering of the Juggalos shit has, like, just by being within 100 miles of. ICP, you waive all rights to sue for damages, don't oh, yeah. you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ICP. Well, good for them. <laughs> um, yeah, diving off the semi was a nice one-up from the yeah. diving off the, the dumpster. dumpster. Star, I mean, you know, it kind of takes I, acrobatics to that mm-hmm. next level. But it, it would have helped if you actually hit yeah. him as opposed yeah. to... didn't fuck up. This is a classic legendary botch when you look at, like, on YouTube <laughs> clips. Like, mm-hmm. this is... This is insane. He does basically a swanton and misses. And misses, it. yeah. It's like Awkward. one like you con- in, you made contact with one dude's arm and uh, you're not dead. Oh. Holy shit! And he hops back up to try to almost go to do it again. But here's the thing: they're, like that, I'm guessing the cue for like the hate club to run in was was him diving off the truck because I because the, the where they're changing at is that that. Like factory or warehouse just up the up the road, so they've got to run a long ways. So when they see him jump and when all the people are there, they can't see that he missed. So yeah. they just see him jump. Oh, we're gonna go and then jump him as soon as he's there. But they get there, no table's been broken. Yeah, so, right. Like, they're like, <laughs> this we, man's a cripple. We can, yeah, that's a thing too. Like, what if he like really seriously hurt himself? They run in, they don't see what happens, and they just jump him right away, like. All kinds of bad stuff could have happened yeah. off of this one. Like, I don't think anybody's thought about it other than they just like watch that clip and they laugh about what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. Like th- this, there could be yeah. like serious damage. The fact that he didn't break his tailbone because when he flipped, it's almost like he basically jumped off a trailer, mm-hmm. flipped, and only had the back of his neck to slow down. Yeah, and the right of on his, his body. Butt. So this is the only move in the entire tape that made you think there might have been serious damage. <laughs> yes, I, I like I said. I've been, yeah, I don't know if you heard my intro. I've been in the professional wrestling business for twelve years. I'm pretty desensitized by now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Most of the time, I'm just like, yeah, fucking let him die. Yeah, wish they would. Yeah, <laughs> that's my spot now. Yeah, it's mine. So wait, wait. Gail had the greatest question for this. Please ask when away. she when she first came up after the things I do for my friends. She looked at me and said, "How much do they get paid for winning <laughs> this thing?" And the look I'm, on your face gave me the answer that I needed, which apparently it is for the glory, which is just kind of sad. Exposure, brother. Yeah. Yeah, oh, people die yeah. of that in the winter. Mm-hmm. Not in, like, February in North Carolina this year, but mm-hmm. normal exposure. February you die of exposure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so are, are, these guys are working for, like, 25 bucks at best, right? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe. Well, there, there wouldn't be too much more than that if yeah. there is. Maybe a hundred. No, less than a hundred. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. I would say. You I, can't buy enough gauze sure to take the stuff up for 25 bucks. I'm sure like Zandig and Mondo and uh, Nick Gage got a little bit of cash. Well, see, the thing is you got to remember is like Zandig trained a lot of these guys, yeah. so they're kind of his students. Mm-hmm. So they're paying so, for the privilege of doing this shit. Yeah, they paid Zandig to be here. <laughs> he might he might be giving them money now, but they paid before, so they, they're still in the in the red with him, in a sense. <laughs> right. at this time. But like uh, Nick Mondo, he actually, I believe he lived in Michigan or Minnesota, so like he, so, they had to fly him in mm-hmm. to show up. So like I'm sure some of the money that was made off the 200 people went to that flight. Um, which you know, all right, this is 2000. What are they paying to get in? Ten bucks, fifteen yeah, bucks? Like that. They might have had a gross of three grand. Yeah. All right, you're spending a few hundred bucks to rent the ring, mm-hmm. and 
okay, I was going to say rent the cameras, but then I was like, nah, that's, some, <laughs> well, that's like, somebody's VHS it'd, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be Smart Mark, and they had a deal with them, and they sell them on their site, and I'm sure they get a cut yeah. of the DVDs, and of course, they get DVDs to sell at their show, so, you know, there's probably, and at this time, the DVDs are pretty hot at this time. But this just seems like a good way to lose a fortune, and I mean, I'm a writer, I'm used to poverty, yeah. but fucking A. Yeah, like, that's the thing, like, gosh, you're like, you're, at, at this time, this isn't too far removed from when I first got into wrestling, which was around 2003, 2004, and Matt Seidel, Evan Bourne. Yeah. Um, I remember, I overheard what he was getting to go to an IWA Mid-South show, and Matt lived in St. Louis, and he was driving to Highland, uh, Indiana, which is just outside of Chicago, and they did a show in Iowa. And then he went back to St. Louis, and he was only getting seventy-five dollars per show. So he was getting one hundred and fifty wow. just to drive to Indiana, Iowa, and then back to St. Louis. To so. lose a fortune and gain a permanent disability. I mean, the worst we're going to get is carpal tunnel and a, cu- a paper cut. Yeah, and, and, it's, and so things, he was one of well, definitely one of the better guys the sitting time. around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, like, to give you a kind of a scale, like, you'd be kind of on the level where these guys would be at. So, I can't imagine that any of these guys on this card got much more than, than 75. Maybe some of the guys, like, in the main event would have got a little bit more just because there was 200 light tubes. And that's another thing you got to think about, too, is the yeah, money. That the shit mo- ain't cheap. Exactly. Is, is, is the money that comes in. It had to be spent on mm, some of the stuff to, they used yeah. to hurt themselves. Yeah, those tables are expensive. Oh, man. And ch- they rented chairs, fucked up chairs. Don't forget the weed whacker. Right? Or the what, glass door. What's such a big build up for such a really Shitty. let down of a spot? Yeah. Well, we're we talking about the weed whacker? Yeah. Well, uh, okay, well, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go to that. But basically, the weed whacker thing, they'd already done a spot with that at, I think, like a tournament or death. Mm-hmm. And there was there was a big thing where the, uh, the wife beater... Basically took, the, wife took the, the weed whacker to Sick Nick yeah. Mondo. And that was one of the things that really got Sick Nick Mondo over as a, like mm-hmm. a wrestler. Like, this guy is so crazy, he'll take a weed whacker mm-hmm. in, the, in the ring. And I just got to say, that ring name, Wife Peter, is not okay. <laughs> not funny, not okay. Yeah, and like there, there was a moment in the commentary where they were Eric Gorgula, like the white now Wife Peter is supposed to be a bad guy, obviously, but Eric Gorgula says this quote. Wife beater has more guts than and courage than we do. <laughs> Words that have never been said in the human language Not until this moment beater. in time. Just wrong. Setting the bar pretty low because you're the fucking commentators, but still. Still. Which small indie wrestling note? Not the first wife beater. What? The yes. Chris Hero was also at one point called wife beater, who is a huge star now. <laughs> Wow. But I believe his was because he actually just wore a wife beater. Yeah. And that was kind of like the gimmick. Yeah. Oh no. What a terrible name. Yeah. Not that there's anything remotely correct about any of this, <laughs> but, but that, still, I gotta say, just wrong. That and all the homophobic slurs coming from yeah. the crowd oh, and man. the other wrestlers. How many times? Like a, a drinking game of faggot. Like yeah. it was insane. If, well, well, even you can't especially drink that much like, without dying. Right? Especially like. Big fat guy in the front row that just kept on. Yeah. yeah. But then also, too, here's the thing. Like, especially they were doing it against the, the Backseat Boys. And Johnny Cashmere, one of the Backseat Boys, he's now openly gay. And, and, but he's reveling in the fact that he's of getting, he's getting well, fans he's, a chance at it because he's a bad guy. So I'm getting you right. to do But the thing is, at this moment in time, he's not out. Sure. So I, I can only imagine, like, the weird feelings mm. that he has. Like, I've got to do this, but. But this is not time, okay. Yeah. I, like, I don't know how. But and this is why I'm still in the Everybody closet. Everybody in the audience paid money to come watch other shirtless guys beat on each other. Yeah. Just saying. To, like, roll you around know, in there. Yeah, just roll around. I'm saying, just saying, you know. Oh, no, I totally. Casting those stones. I totally get it. Exactly. <laughs> the hypocrisy is not lost. The, the man who shoves his thumb up on yeah, the man's exactly. asses understands where you're coming from. But also have a Love Wind shirt, so I feel that we kind of... And how many times can you say that sentence? <laughs> I wrestle a lot. You could say it quite often. I, I, oh, I've seen a fair chunk out. of Zane's matches live and on the High Spots Wrestling Network.com. <laughs> yeah. Catch me on the YouTube. I wrestle blow-up dolls. <laughs> I, 
I got to admit, the ladder as a fight ring weapon, that was kind of interesting. More interesting than the weed whacker. That was, that was kind of good. Yeah, which was utilized. Uh... But the wedgie was completely anticlimactic. By the time we got <laughs> yeah. to that point, it was like, uh, we don't, we've already seen the moon guy, and you're just you're just gonna pull wedgie, really? Yeah, that's kind of sad. Ladder was used in, the, in match number five, Sick like, Mondo versus whoa. Justice Pain, and like and, and that oh, was that the low rent karate kid's name, Nick Mondo? Yes, yes Sick Nick Mondo. Okay, which yeah. favorite match of this show? I think Nick Mondo is awesome. I like Nick Mondo too, but at this moment in time, I had already seen so much violence yeah. that my brain was just numb. Mm-hmm. So it's very like I was like, okay, let's just yeah. get to this. Because I know the mm. 200 light two match is coming up next. Well, my thought the entire time was like, yeah, I've seen all this shit, and it's awful. But I wanted to see those two guys, like, legit wrestle. Like, have an actual indie wrestling match. Like we just kind of saw. Both, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, they like, both had obvious abilities. They, all, they both yeah. had, like, a good Christmas to them and talent. Like, I, I hate that it was kind of wasted on just more death. Right. That's why I've never gone to these deathmatch mm-hmm. cards because I'm like I want to watch people. Do and stuff. I also thought that Mondo had he stood out the most because he was only the only guy in arguable gear. Yeah. So he already stood out to me as like, oh, I want to see this guy do more stuff. Yeah, and that was the thing. Like, I think that was the big refreshing change of Trent Acid mm-hmm. versus Rick Blade. Is like, okay, now yeah. we're going to see some wrestling mm-hmm. here a little. Like, yeah, sure, it's high spots and jumping off of stuff, but we're going to see some moves. We're going to see. But some it's whips not just and... beating somebody in the head with yeah, something like, again. That's why when I, like we got to match five, I'm like, oh, are we really just going to beat the shit out of each other again? Like, which before we leave that Trent Acid match, uh, I believe this is where it occurred. We talked about the chair. Uh, I'm sorry, we talked about the swanton off the yeah. the truck, whatever. That bitch almost dying, trying to give Trent Acid a move. Like, try to do that little Hurricane Rana or whatatever. And just, like, dying. Just just crushed down straight. Was, I believe oh, it was in this that, match. That, that, the, the girl? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, she runs into you the said, that was, spot. That was... Scary. Right? There were that, not the first girl. That wasn't not the one that rolled the rumble, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the yeah. girl in the yeah, like, There were Shorty. two girls. Shorty yeah. was her name. Shorty. Oh, yeah. man. I felt also so bad not for okay. her. Not Just yeah. random, def- like, not cool term for female is. It's like, oh, I need a female. I need a female valet. We'll call her Ho. I, th- <laughs> I, think, I think it was. I mean, she I, was I think it was short. Rick Blade's girlfriend, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, like,. This was at the time, also Hardy Boys, Lita. Mm-hmm. Like, let's just get any girl to do, yeah, just be uh, there, spot, yeah, yeah, and yeah. do a spot. But like, she was obviously not. She's no Candice LeRae. No, I could say that. Not comfortable. Yeah. Say, yeah, not comfortable being in the no ring. No, Amy Dumas. Yeah, like it's just very like. Oh. I felt the worst for her. Yes. That, of the at, entire show, I felt so bad for her. After the show, I think she probably might have felt the worst too. Yeah, that's like a year's worth of chiropractic. Guy that jumped off of the trailer went up to him and goes, "Are you okay?" Yeah, <laughs> that looked rough. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Yeah, it was Rick Blade. Rick Blade yeah. was trying to protect her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I was like, "Dude, you just fell off." Yeah. Babe, are you okay? Yeah, babe, yeah. are you okay? You landed in a ring where there's a little bit of padding. Like what's supposed to be the safest place to yeah. land. You landed there, and you were more so messed bad, up than though. I am. Oh, yes. I felt so bad for her. Yeah, that was... That needed to be addressed before we move on. Yeah, yeah and, and also, too, uh, I thought you were going to go with the full moon spot. Where you know, and that's... Yeah, can, again... Can we just never see, have that again? I'm good like, for him for being able to do that on some shows, because, like, you can't get away with that nowadays. Oh, we... Do, I, but I can't. That's why we can't wrestle in South Carolina anymore, Jake. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, uh, I, I showed my, you know... He showed his ass. Literally, not not figuratively. Uh, and I'm never allowed in South Carolina ever again. So Wait, you mean if I should moon somebody, I can get thrown out of South Carolina? <laughs> yeah. You talk about how you love yes. Ric Flair, but we do one Ric Flair spot where a butt comes out and everybody loses their fucking mind. Yeah. No, I'm looking at this like a bonus. Now yeah. I know how to get out of South Carolina. That's exactly how. Um, Took me 19 years the first time. And just forge a doctor's letter. You'll be all right. <laughs> Get out a couple real of fast. times. Yeah. And yeah. then deny it. <laughs> Get out real fast. And then him say, yeah, then him also deny ever seeing you. Yes. It's real easy, actually. Exactly. So, Justin Case and Justice Payne are like on the same team and the same stable. Come on, y'all got to do better with the names than that shit. Because that's like... That part. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. the... Yeah, him. Yes. I forgot about Justin Yeah, Case. they like come in at well, the end of... Relatives of Just Incredible. Well, you know, they're part of the hate club and they spell hate club with H and an eight. Uh, yeah. yeah so. you're, you're complaining about this after the Backseat Boys and the Hardy Boys? I mean, really, the bar A whole bunch of boys. Really low. A whole bunch of boys over the age of 30 these yes. days. Yeah. 
a whole bunch of fun. Um, can we get to now... Ooh, but the best fan comment was okay. at the very end of match five. Okay. My favorite fan comment of the whole thing was some dude yelling, Max Smack has a vagina. <laughs> at least he was proper in his you know, yeah. naming of the, the Orphus. Yeah, well, at least he was attacking somebody personally <laughs> as opposed to just saying a blanket statement m- of m- misogynistic or homophobic at least he was targeting his no, rage that's specifically why it was my at a person like, like, yeah. and it was the it was the heel he was going after the bad guy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah yeah did right. it proper did it proper. old school the way it's supposed to be done now and, and then then let's and, let's get to the main event 200 light tube death match between wife beater and Nick Gage. Oh, Nick Gage. Uh, thoughts? My favorite thing of the whole thing was Nick Gage coming out and throwing a chair directly at the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Start as you mean to go on. Yeah. Yes. I mean, fuck. Ugh. Yeah, that, I, my, my first note is, that's fucked up. And then my second one is, that dude's called the wife beater. Yeah. Um, that's fucked So, like, I've never been hit with a light tube, nor do I ever plan to get hit with a light tube. What if you're like in there and you get hit with the first one and you're like, oh no, oh no, I, that sucked. And now you still have 199 more to go. It's a bad fucking day. Oh, like, nope, it's done. Tap. All right. Yeah. Bye. Well, I've gotten cut by bits of a broken light bulb before. And that's really scalpel thin, mm-hmm. scalpel sharp glass. That like breaks off in your skin. Yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, nothing good about that. No, and no shirts. No. This one, they're not wearing shirts. Uh, The guy named Wife Beater not wearing a shirt? The Wife Beater of all things? And they've been wearing shirts the whole show, but not in the one. Because you got to build, Here's the the one that I am most puzzled by. The referee is not wearing gloves. He has to make a count. Yeah, I fell. And he doesn't have gloves on. And he's, he's looking down like... Yeah. Many right, times right. I've just been like one, two, three. I'd be stomping. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I just yeah. yell the numbers like, you did it, man. But all, all I kept thinking through this whole card was so much hepatitis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So much hepatitis. Lucky. Oh, yeah. The, the entire the entire back was just yeah bloody. But so they called one guy the innovator. And I was like, you innovated a fucking staple gun? <laughs> okay. But, uh... No, um, also, too, in this match, the barbed wire hoagie makes an appearance. Yes! Which, you know, like... What asshole took enough time to, A, ruin a perfectly good sandwich, yes. and we've discussed the finances of this show, that was over budget. Oh, I'm sure. That that was the thing that finally put them over budget. That was it. Like, they were, they were just on pace, they are going to pay everybody, they had to take care of the flight, all the tables, all and the And another spool of barbed wire and a goddamn hoagie. Mm-hmm. Shit. All right. There go the profits. All of it right there. Sorry, Mondo Nick Mondo or Mega Nick Mondo or whatever your name is. You're shitted now, pal. <laughs> your girlfriend Shorty? Nope. Not enough money to train her how to do that spot. Nope. Not at all. Yeah, I'm like, God almighty. Brain buster on the light tubes. Gouged foreheads open with the light. Mm-hmm. That was some Abdullah the Butcher shit right there. Yeah. It just... Uh, it's just so excessive, and then the, the, there's so much blood, and, and I've got to say, this is very off-color, so Gail, I, I apologize. I'm we, sure we, I've heard it. You, your arms are already crossed, you've already done it. <laughs> like, like, I cannot accept anything more in my space right now. <laughs> like, 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 I, I don't this from you. someone who writes about evisceration and decapitation <laughs> in the... You know. Your body language right now just says <laughs> says that I can only imagine your body language. Oh no, I have my gummy worms and my pretzels and my dog. I was doing fine. <laughs> but I believe they the, the both commentators were really trying to push hard a period joke about all the blood they were seeing. And, oh, and, is that what they were trying to yeah, do? Yeah, they and, and, failed. Yeah, because that's the thing. He failed the first time, and then tried to come back to it again. And I'm just <sighs> like, dude, it's not funny. It's not funny. No, it wouldn't have been funny if the joke had landed. Yeah. Even 17 years ago, that shit wasn't funny. Yeah. Like, and, and I'm like, wow. But I mean, I think even Sam Kinnison would be like, hey man, turn it down a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, people have paid for this. <laughs> 
at, at one point, I... And honestly, none of them were doing PMS well. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, leave it to the pros. I'm glad we have a woman's perspective on the matter. <laughs> I, I did I did admire the fact that they saved that bat and then sold it to the props department of The Walking Dead for for Negan. You know that's some Jeffrey Dean Morgan shit Fine right there. Fine time to leave me Lucille. Yeah. Are, are, are we suggesting that maybe Robert Kirkman was a fan of early CZW? Or? You ever seen Kirkman? Yes, I, I. He looks like he might have been a little hardcore back in the day. You saying that he might have been a guy in khaki shorts, sitting front row in Philadelphia, hey. watching CZW? No, nah, I think he probably was more an ECW guy, but okay. still All screaming right. slurs. Still, I, still wearing khaki shorts. He's a bigger yeah. dude. He, yeah. he understands the plight. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think Kirkman's probably seen. He's probably seen some old Funk Foley. Yeah. Some old Funk Foley <laughs> shit. At least the IAA Japan one. For sure. Yeah. King of the Death Match. But my God, this was just, I mean, just a fuck. Oh, yeah. My note was, fuck, he cranked that weed eater. (laughs) Wow. I mean, I'm assuming there weren't strings on the weed eater. But I wasn't oh, I'm sure there that. is. I'm sure there is. You just watch them hit each other with 200 fluorescent bulbs, and you're expecting restraint. No one was smart enough to gimmick the hardcore weapons until I was just John hoping Moxley it was a string weed eater and not a blade. Yeah. And then I was like, "Wow, a lot of homophobic commentary." Yeah. A lot of that. It got worse throughout the show. Like they were fun. They really then, did. And they're like, you know what? We need to really kick it up a notch on that. We like, we need our commentary to be as hardcore as our wrestling. No. No. It's it's so weird to to look back at like you know, late nineties, early two thousands, like. Like, 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 people complain now, like, oh, we're too sensitive when it comes to, like, we're too pitiful. Uh, but I feel like this might be over the line. Like, I can understand, like, hey, it's okay if this word is this, or you're trying to make a joke and you're having a word play with that, or you're doing uh, this. Uh, you know, uh, if, 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 uh, hey, if you have a problem, if you don't know to call them Inuits or Eskimos, if that's an issue, but, like, maybe some of this language, maybe I'm glad we don't, we don't live in this space anymore. <laughs> yeah. like, or yeah. do we? But. Yeah, I don't know. But, and then also, too, they go back to some of that language in the interview with the wife beater at the end of the show. But, like... Which I tuned out to because I couldn't understand anything yeah. that they were saying. Which you shouldn't have because he said he was getting on a flight in eight hours looking like that. He's getting on a flight while, while he has a million small cuts in his back, bleeding. The, and keep in mind, this is pre-9-11, so yeah. I don't know <laughs> what security has to go through to get on the plane... But apparently, well, just walking through period, not fucking no baseball big deal. Bat. Yeah, he could get on plane bleeding like yeah. that, I guess. But you could get Sorry. on a plane to Japan like that. Like yeah. I, I'm afraid to take like an ibuprofen like too close <laughs> to a flight. And this guy, unbelievable. Yeah. So one of my final notes was: This is what the ICP wrestling shows are like in my head. In no, the they're way more tame. <laughs> way more tame. Because <laughs> you guys have done those, right? Yes, yeah. we have. <laughs> a couple of times. Wow, it's raining like a son of a bitch. Yeah, I left my windows down. Oh, uh, so that's, why, that's, why, a... that's why I excused myself for a moment. So you're going to have a really wet ass. Yeah. Well, I think we Real all are. wet ass. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, this was disturbing. Yeah. I mean... I, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Like, 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 Kale, I feel so sorry <laughs> that I did <laughs> no, this. No, you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Gail. Don't worry. <laughs> well, so, nice try. Because <laughs> the thing is, I did, it didn't cross my mind. That you were a kind and decent person <laughs> until I oh, said that because of who you hang because out I'm with. Friends with John. Yeah, just, well, yeah, no, yeah. well, I mean, I, I, I knew John, John could handle just about anything, but when I sent the email, like, oh, this is the show we're discussing, and as soon as I hit send, I go, oh, what did I just do? <laughs> like, I couldn't, like, I got perfectly decent shows. Like, we just watched a, a movie that was PG, yeah. and we discussed that on the last podcast, and here I give you a kind and decent Was a shitbag comedian that would probably not flinch an eye at this. Exactly. And and I, I do this to you, uh, so I, I apologize again, but <laughs> what are your overall reactions to the show after now watching it? Um, I know you already think less of me, <laughs> but how do you feel about your life? <laughs> oh, my life's just fine. <laughs> um, you know, the fact that it was consensual doesn't make this any less disturbing, and I go back to the fact that I didn't know violence could be that dull. Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is true. So, would you consider this wrestling? 
No. I mean, bar brawl, pre-scheduled bar brawl, maybe. But, I mean, yeah, I guess it is because it says so on the title. But, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a brawl. It's, I'd say there were two matches that were wrestling. Yeah. yeah. I'd say two out of what were there six matches? I saw some actual moves. I'd say moves. two. Yeah. Yeah, but but is that enough for you, John, a wrestling fan, to yeah. consider wrestling? The overall card, no. No. Oh. I'd call it a mess. Yeah. Um. Now, in two thousand, would I have? Yeah. Yeah, I well, would have. Well, in two thousand, I was would have been digging this shit. Yeah. I would have been like, oh, that's the most awesome thing ever. Rawr! Because I'm like in my late twenties at that. That's time. the thing. I consider like early CZW like my big guilty pleasure. Like I actually enjoy stuff like because I find it giggly because it's so. Oh, what are you doing? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you don't do it like that anymore. Oh, <laughs> <that's> like <laughs> thanks ooh. for doing that, so I don't have to. Oh, yeah, exactly. It, yeah. It's a little bit of that. Like, if, if this is about the time that the rep, the sport is being pushed so far, especially at the this level because for so long it was work the arm hold the chin lock for right. 10 minutes this is the time where the whole art form is being pushed so far to its boundaries that's what, i think that the, the interesting thing about professional wrestling is art and this and this time in particular like as far as everything every extreme was pushed so far because the main company wwe was pushing it as far as it was and then mm-hmm. everybody else the avant-garde and the smaller niche markets are pushing it so far. Because this is when on Monday Night Raw you've got Jello wrestling matches mm-hmm. and bra and panty matches and Sable mm-hmm. topless with her boobs painted. And... We've got barbed wire even on, on yeah. Monday Night Raw. We have people being set on fire. And, and the whole art form is being pushed. And, and, and I think pro wrestling is one of the few arts that have been pushed so far and then now had to figure a way to come back in. For the culture, mm-hmm. for people to understand it, like I don't know if mu- music has been pushed to that boundaries. Maybe because I, so. I mean you had Luke Skywalker back in the day with his brand of rap, and yeah, you had those kind true. of cycle throughs, and you had the Bloodhound Gang with that that kind of stuff, and then you had gangster rap with that ultra violent aspect death and metal. Eat, death metal. Well, what about your guys' medium as far as like being authors? Is, is this something like- dark? Huh? Yeah, we've got Grimdark, the Game of Thrones stuff, Joe Abercrombie, where... Um, Gail's Nobody not makes quite, it out alive. Yeah, where don't get attached to any character because they're going to be dead in 100 pages. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and anytime you get something that pushes the boundaries, you eventually got backlash like that. Um, we don't. I don't think we see it in as extreme a fashion as you guys do or... Um, music and film because it takes so much longer to consume what we do Mm -hmm. because the shortest stuff we write is going to take three or four hours to consume and you know a long ass wrestling match is going to be 30 to 40 minutes yeah I mean 60 minutes is an Iron Man match now you know but do you feel like you know when people when artists push uh, uh, something like an art form to that extreme do you feel like it's good for the sport or good for the art form or good for the thing because you do get people that like like obviously this is one of the first times you've seen pro wrestling if I was you know like obviously if John's like hey Gail here's what I'm really interested in show that you know you may never see it wrestling ever again when really that's really not kind of what wrestling is especially nowadays do you feel like when you push an art form that far that it's good for the particular art form I wouldn't have seen this as a sport. I saw this as borderline porn in terms of actual violence and people being hurt. Um, Not in the... People being hurt as the goal of doing what you're doing. Yeah, people get hurt in a football game. People get hurt in a hockey match. But they they don't go out there completely with the goal of let's see how effed up we can make somebody. Mm -hmm. This, to me, bordered on porn. Yeah, and like what... when. I go to a PWX show and see you guys. Yeah, somebody might get hurt. Even in the course of the match, you're knocking the hell out of each other. But your goal at the end of the match is not to have somebody lying at your feet, bleeding and unable to carry themselves and, off. and alienate the audience and the people that showed mm-hmm. up. Where I feel right. like I think that's the big thing about this is like I think that some of these people are like oh we don't care we just want to be as crazy and as raunchy as possible when we're not thinking about what it could cause of alienating people. Yeah, I feel like this is, um, this style, this style is just, it's a bridge too far for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are still people doing deathmatch shows 
today, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't go to them. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to slag on anybody for putting them on or going to them or participating in them. Fine, whatever, you be you. I'm not going to pay my money to go to it. So do I think it's overall good for the sport? Not necessarily, because like you said, that may be someone's first or only exposure to the art form. It's like back when they had the Grand Guignol Theater, when it was all the bloody theater back in the, you know, you've got, if you watch Penny Dreadful, they've got Mm -hmm. the Grand Guignol Theater there, and that was like a precursor to the Alice Cooper shows. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, some people, if some people, Alice Cooper's their only exposure to a rock concert, well, they may hate that and be terrified and never go back. Yeah. And if some people's first exposure to theater was Grand Guignol or Ant- Antonin Artaud and Theater of Cruelty, they may have never gone back to the theater. So I think it's fine if you have that stuff for the people who are hardcore fans and who are on the extreme edges of liking an art form but as far as good for it meh it's fine but i don't think it does anything great Mm -hmm. to support the overall thing what do y'all think back in this time i would have thought no it's not wrestling Uh, i've been way against it uh nowadays more so i mean flavors like people don't people see my comedy based wrestling and don't think that i wrestle like they don't consider that yeah, they, they, yeah I do a lot of comedy as well and yeah. there's some people that would describe kind of what me and Zane do as just as awful as the way that you describe hardcore mm-hmm. wrestling they describe it as, as ju- being just as awful and detrimental mm-hmm. interesting killing yeah. the killing it the same way that you yeah. consider that nowadays uh, yeah in the fact that I believe everyone should have flavors and options I mean Baskin Robbins is so good because you have 30 flavors exactly so and today I would back then no not at all uh, but being as someone that is uh, criticized often as being a comedy wrestler and how I'm ruining everything, I see the I see where that necessity is needed and what what I feel that I bring to wrestling. I can see how those guys feel the same way. Yeah, in their and like in their hand. Like I certainly see if you're building a card, put in a hardcore match. Mm-hmm. Or two hardcore matches. Put in a comedy match. Two mm-hmm. comedy matches. You know, give people a breather. Give you some rising and falling tension and things like that. Um, I'm just not in for a whole yeah. card of this kind of viscera. Yeah. Not the mm-hmm. gigantic black dude. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Not too much in him anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but yeah, but match five, I was I was just numb. Just right. yeah, and and I, like I said, I consider this to be like I I enjoy watching it. It's, it's kind of my guilty pleasure. Yeah, to watch it. yeah. I broke it up into three sessions to yeah. watch the whole thing. I was yeah. like, I can't sitting down and watching two hours of this oh, is very man. hard. Hard. Uh, Kale's raising her hand. I did as well. <laughs> I watched it all the way through. And yeah, I did too. Jesus Christ. So. But yeah, anything else we got to say? I think we, I think we hit it. I think uh, yeah. I always like to get these your insights yeah. on, on little parts of professional Glad wrestling. Glad to see their production values have come a long way yeah. in seventeen yes. years. It's, it's, they've they've definitely done that. But um, you know, I I, I want to let you guys have an opportunity that if anybody that's enjoyed you guys talking, if anybody feels extremely so, sorry that you went through this <laughs> ordeal, Gail, I want them to have an opportunity how they can. Uh, make it up co- for make, it. Make, make, make up for it, get in contact <laughs> with you, uh, purchase some of your work or anything that's out there. So please, you have a live microphone. Let people know they can, how they can get in touch with you or get in touch with your work. Um, pretty pretty easy to find on Amazon. It's Gail Z. Martin. Um, website's gailzmartin.com. Twitter is at gailzmartin. I'm pretty easy to find. And John, yourself? I'm similar. My website is johnhartness.com. I'm on facebook.com slash John G. Hartness. At John Hartness on Twitter. Uh, on March 12th, I'll be at the Charlotte Comic Con up at the Embassy Suites in Concord. Mm-hmm. Come by, bring money, buy shit. <laughs> and you're also a podcaster, people. I am I did, also a podcaster. I, obviously, we're on a podcast right now, so like, maybe give them a suggestion. I listen just to yours. started a brand new podcast called The Writer's Journey. We've got one episode up. I have a couple of older podcasts available on YouTube that I did that were short lived because. One of them was video, and carrying video equipment around is a pain in the ass. Amen, brother. (laughs) I say this to the man who shoots a video podcast, as well as this one. Yeah, so The Writer's Journey, it's going to have a new episode out this week. We're going to try to do a 
new an interview podcast every two weeks with writers. Basically, I'm ripping off Colt Cabana's Art of Wrestling for writers. Yeah, go right ahead. I, this this show's rip off as well. There you go. <laughs> Zane, if, what do you got? And if anyone deserves to be ripped off, it's Colt Cabana. Yeah, <laughs> I bought his T-shirt. Fuck it. No, he's not listening. Uh, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Not, not not this long in the podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's tuned out already. Yeah. A uh, couple shows this month: uh, Warzone Wrestling in Fayetteville, PWF in Hubert. Uh, March 12th, I'll be wrestling former WWE vampires, Kevin Thorne and Gangrel, because <laughs> that's where I'm at in life. Okay. And at the end of the... Oh, we have PWX, uh, AML, and at the end of the month, we head to WrestleMania! At WrestleCon at WrestleCon.com. Me and Zane will both be there. Um, it'll be quite the show, so I recommend anybody that's going to be at WrestleMania to... Come by to WrestleCon. You just get 20 bucks to just walk around and say hi to people. We'll be around. Me and Zane will both have our wares selling, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be highly stressed out as usual, much yeah. like I will be this weekend when I'm in Northeast Wrestling. <laughs> uh, wrestling, wrestling the big guy. Right back. Uh, but anyways, before we get out here, as always, I remind you guys that for any corrections or mistakes that we've made, please get in t- contact with me on Twitter at Manning or email me at jake at sslshow.com. Make sure you check out the website, howdidthisgetbook.com. We have t-shirts available and also information about the next shows we'll be discussing and reviewing. It's the best place to get all your information about how did this get booked. Also, too, guys, please subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, it's all out there available. And please, please, I beg you de- dearly, please write a review and subscribe on iTunes. We could really use that so we get some more eyeballs and earbuds on this program. But only good ones. Only good ones. But this has been another edition of How Did This Get Booked? Woo!